Hello. Hey, you gonna get a cup of coffee? Poor as dirt, but happy as a clam. He wore raggedy clothes, and he didn't have anything. But he had joy in his heart, and he was happy because he was a filler. It starts out I'm in this dark room, and a light starts to filter in, right? And as the light enters the room, I can see the other side of the room. There's like this tapestry, right? So I'm looking at this thing, and. Um, it's like these really intricate images woven into it. And so I'm looking at these like, it's like scenes from history, right? So like it, it runs like from it, like from the amoeba days through like the cavemen and then to like modern history and stuff, like modern times, right? So I'm walking along and it's like, and then at the end like, like I get to like my reflection. So I'm just looking at myself, right? And then like, I like turns into a door and I go through it. And there's a, you know, dim light coming in from the back from the, the cave opening. There's also a fire burning behind it, you know, kept by these captors of theirs. And um, they cast shadows on the wall, so they see their own shadows on the wall, but they also see these other shadows that their captors will uh, kind of trick them with. So they'll, uh, you know, they'll take shapes and move them across the, across the fire to create these shadows, flickering shadows. Uh, animals, people, objects, and things like this. So these people that are trapped in the cave, they believe that these shadows are the real deal. And if they hear their captors talking, they believe the voices are coming from the, the shadows. This king is the head of the empire, head of the city, um, wealthy, you know, really successful, has the best food, the best wine, the best women, um, doing whatever kings do. He'd spend his days going all over the land, from village to village, playing his cheerful, happy music to everybody around. And he filled their hearts with joy, and he was beloved by everyone. Except for this one curmudgeonly old miser. The ground below me turns into grass, and in the distance I can kind of see mountains, like take form through like this sort of mist and and um, all of a sudden like like this forest kind of just shoots out of the ground I'm almost like impaled by this tree. Finally one of these girls breaks free. She's chiseling away at her chains for months and she finally gets free and she turns the first thing she sees is the fire. So she approaches the fire moth to a flame kind of thing and she tries touching the fire and she burns her hand right. It's these two gods they're older gods, so it's chaos and order. And they basically birthed everything. All of creation, everything that these people knew came from chaos and order. Um, and so chaos gives birth to more gods. And as chaos would, these gods take after chaos. <laughs> Every morning the fiddler would walk by his house and say, good morning to you, sir. And every day, he never said anything back. And every evening, the fiddler would walk by Coin's home and say, good evening to you, sir. Not once did the old man say hello back. And I could see through the foliage, this like building. And usually that's when I wake up, like I wake up when I see this building. But last night, I didn't wake up. How could I have believed that that was my only reality for all these years when there's all this, right? So, you know, after being out in the real world for a while, she feels like she needs to go back in and, and lighten her, 
her fellow prisoners. So she makes her way back in. They were rambunctious and rude and crude and just causing trouble and racketing everyone. Um, and so one day while they were messing around, they killed their father order. Oh. So all that's left is chaos. And this woman is irate. She, you know, sparing no expense. This goddess. This goddess, you know, sparing no expense when it comes to discipline. Like, she's just going to wipe her offspring out with a huge army, with a beast at the head. He waited up all night for the fiddler to return. He drank a couple bottles, his finest vintage. <laughs> and when, when he heard the notes of the fiddler coming up the road, he sprung out of his chair, stormed out the door, started waving his arms and running towards the fiddler. This river comes out of my stomach and like floods the forest and I kind of just fold into the ground and I kind of sink into the ground and decompose and then the water sinks down and I, I grow again into this tree and I'm like a thousand feet tall like this huge tree and I'm looking down as this tree upon all these people like all of humanity. A delusion. It's basically phantoms and shadows that they've been following for years, right? And um, the reaction from these folks is kind of shocked. It's like, no way, this is what we know. This is reality. How can you tell us something different? And she says, look, I touched the fire. I, I burned my hands on the fire. I went up out of the cave and I tasted different foods and I smelled flowers and I saw the sun. And all of these things, right? I heard music and all of these sounds. And they're kind of perplexed. They're like, this woman, I think, has lost her mind. And that's when this god Tops comes in to the story okay. out of nowhere and basically shuts down the army, destroys down the army, takes down Chaos, captures her, and then demands that all other gods pay honor to him and kind of obey his will and they're like you know we're your gonna tops so your tops we're gonna listen to you because you just single-handedly took down chaos stop that racket and the fiddler looked up and was stunned he didn't know what to do this crazy insane person old man guy was like running towards him and he uh yeah he didn't know what to do and then he did the only thing he knew how to do. He picked up his fiddle and he started to play the most beautiful song he could think of. And like millions of years go by and like they all like survive off of the fruit of like me, of like the tree, right? So, and then, and then like as enough time goes by, I wither and I can't bear fruit anymore. If you've been taught your whole life that this is the way things are and suddenly that's been shattered and kind of things are left open to you to decide, right? It's kind of a, an insecurity going on there, right? It's like, I have to decide on my life now. I have to make up reality for myself. The priests of the god come, take the king out of the city, strip him of his robes, all of his jewels, his beautiful kingly stuff, and basically in front of all the city, right in smack dab in front of the city gates demand a confession out of this king you know and what they're expecting i mean who knows what he actually said mm -hmm. um confessions on what he could have done better when it came to like protection and taxes and how he might have wronged the people and as he played the notes just radiated out from his soul Every fiber of his being like came out through his fingertips into the fiddle and the music just was so exquisite and it reached the old man's cold heart and softened it. And he stopped in his tracks and he closed his eyes and he just let the music wash over him. And when the fiddler was finished, both men had tears in their eyes. So the king did his confessing, was roughed up a bit marched back through the city, um, was expected to make a sacrifice within the castle walls. On top Again, of that, everything else, a yes, sacrifice. Yes, a sacrifice. Um, and then that kind of appeased Tops for the 
364 days remaining until they kind of had to do it all over again. Seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, so, so here's to those who would enlighten us. Here's to those that have left the cave, the pioneers of knowledge. Cheers. I don't know. Looks like I got you thinking, though. Yes, you did. <laughs> and then I woke up. So, I just don't uh, know. I'm gonna get back to work. There was peace made between them, and all is right in the world.